हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज रचना शर्मा एंड यू आर वाचिंग फूड टेक गीक्स वेयर आई अपलोड वीडियोस लेक्चर्स ट्यूटोरियल्स करियर गाइडेंस वीडियोस एग्जाम रिलेटेड वीडियोस ऑन फूड साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो दिस इज अ सेकंड वीडियो ऑन द एमसीक्यू सीरीज वेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज विद प्रॉपर एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर एफएसएसआई एग्जाम एंड आई विल बी कमिंग अप मोर सच वीडियोस सो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड आल्सो फॉलो आवर telegram page so that you do not miss any important update related to food science and technology so let's start today's questions question number 1 is which of the following products are fortified in india and the options are milk and oil salt wheat flour and rice all of the above so fortification is the process in which some of the nutrients are added into the food that are naturally absent in the food or maybe they are destroyed during the processing so in india we have all these products being fortified so here is the list of the products which are fortified in india a uh, wheat flour which is being fortified with iron folic acid vitamin b12 rice being fortified with iron folic acid and vitamin b12 and double fortified salt fortified with iron and iodine and the edible oil is being fortified with vitamin a and d and then we have milk which is also being fortified with vitamin a and d so these five products are fortified in india with essential micronutrients next question to overcome the deficiency of nutrients from a synthetic source is called and the options are given so the correct answer to this is option b supplementation so food supplements are the concentrated source of nutrients uh, that is minerals or vitamins or any other substance with nutritional effect and they are given in dose form like pills tablets capsules etc and you all must have seen uh, many of the food supplements available in the market uh, for example tablets of calcium iron fish oil capsules or herbal supplements etc so there are many range of uh, food supplements present in market next question term used for live bacteria found in yogurt is so in the yogurt and curd or some other fermented products uh, live bacteria culture is present and that is known as probiotics so probiotics are the live microorganisms that are useful for our digestive system health and they are good microorganisms that keep us healthy and they are present in many of the uh, fermented products like dairy products uh, sauerkraut miso to soya tempeh and many more fermented products so the probiotics are the useful and helpful microorganisms and the foods which help to grow these uh, probiotics are known as prebiotics so there are two terms probiotics and prebiotics so probiotics are those microorganisms which are helpful for our body and they live in the intestine part of our digestive system and prebiotics are those foods which act as a food for the probiotic microorganisms so i hope both the terms are clear to you next question name of the nationwide campaign of fssai to reduce the intake of hfss foods so now let's first see what is hfss foods so hfss food uh, stands for high fat salt and sugar foods so the foods which are having high uh, content of fat salt and sugars are known as hfss foods and fssai is uh, working over awareing the people to reduce the intake of uh, fat sugar and salt so it has initiated a national wide campaign that has a tagline of option c aaj se thoda kam so fssai has launched this nation wide campaign aaj se thoda kam to urge people to reduce their salt sugar and fat intake eat right movement covers food companies retailers restaurants to promote this campaign and fssi has also rolled out an advertisement which features bollywood actor rajkumar rao to promote this campaign here also you can see this picture so you can also find out this uh, particular video on the internet so this is the campaign which is being initiated by fssi to uh, aware people to reduce the intake of fat salt and sugar next question full form of eic is and the options are given so eic stands for export inspection council of india so it is the official export certification body of india which ensures quality and safety of products exported from india also the name suggests the same thing 
and it is an autonomous body under ministry of commerce and industry government of india and eic issues the certificate of origin here yeah, the certificate of origin we have discussed in our one of the videos where we have discussed a previous year question paper of fssci cfso exam you can find out the uh, link for the same video in the i button or also in the description box so you can check out what is the certificate of origin so eic has the responsibility to issue certificate of origin to the exporters for the particular products Next question we have FSSCI recently added standard for which of the new milk variant. So we have a large variety of milks like uh, uh, buffalo milk, cow milk and then also the different varieties uh, uh, on the basis of their process like full cream milk, double tone milk, tone milk, recombined milk. So recently FSSCI has added standards for camel milk. Uh, oh, sorry, the option is uh, printed wrong here. The answer is camel milk. FSSCI recently has added uh, the standards for camel milk and the standards which are being set up are the milk should have minimum of 3% fat and 6.5% of SNF. So these are the standards which are being finalized by FSSCI for camel milk. And this uh, thing has been possible due to the efforts of ICAR National Research Center on Camel Bikaner. So they have done a lot of efforts to uh, make people aware about the health benefits of camel milk. Next question, according to FSSCI, full cream milk should contain. So FSSCI has made standards for different varieties of milk. So for full cream milk, the fat content should be 6%. All the other parameters for different milk varieties here you can see on the screen. So for full cream milk, the fat content should be 6%, minimum of 6% and the SNF content should be of 9%. And the uh, standards for other varieties like toned milk, double toned milk, skin milk, standardized milk is also being given. So here you can see for full cream milk, toned milk and double toned milk to remember these values is very easy. Like for full cream milk, the fat content is 6. For toned, it's just half, 3. And for double toned milk, it's again the half of toned milk. So 6, 3 and then 1.5. So it is quite easy to remember these values and it is also very important. There is a high chance that any one of the value can be asked in the exam. Next question. Which authority replaced the Processed Food Export Promotion Council PFEPC? So these are the options given. So one of the authority was established by replacing this particular council. So the answer to this is an option A, APIDA. So we have discussed about APIDA in some of our videos. So if we talk about APIDA, so it was established by Government of India under the Agricultural and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority Act. So this is the name of the act under which APIDA was established and it replaced PFEPC that is Processed Food Export Promotion Council. Before APIDA we were having this particular council and APIDA was established and it replaced that particular council and APIDA came into effect from 13th of Jan 1986. This date is very important and the major function of APIDA includes development of industries related to exports, fixing of standards for export products, carrying out various inspections, improving packaging of export products, promotion of export and etc. So its major work is around the uh, export and it has 12 regional offices and one head office which is in New Delhi. So this is all about APIDA and it comes under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Next question we have, according to FSS Act, full form of COA is, so COA stands for Certificate of Analysis and it is a document that manufacturers produce to verify that the particular product they manufacture confirms to their customer's requirement. So basically we can say that this certificate verifies that a particular product has undergone specified testings with specified results. So this is a certificate of uh, analysis of that particular product. Next and the last question of today's video, FSS regulations on health supplements 2016 and nutraceuticals prohibit. So FSS has made certain regulations on health supplements and nutraceuticals. So you all must know what are health supplements and what are nutraceuticals. So nutraceutical is being made by combining two terms that is nutrients 
plus pharmaceuticals. So means those particular nutrients which can act as a medicine to your body, which are having certain health benefits to your body are known as nutraceuticals. Like for example, uh, eugenol. Eugenol is a chemical compound present in clove and that can help you in relieving your tooth pain. So therefore means the particular nutrient is having certain uh, pharmaceutical effect in your body. So therefore they are known as nutraceuticals. So FSS has made certain regulations and according to that it has prohibited the use of psychotropic substances in nutraceuticals and health supplements. So uh, uh, psychotropic substances are the drugs or substances that affect how the brain works. And they cause change in our mood, thoughts, feelings, or behavior. Uh, some of the examples of psychotropic substances are caffeine, alcohol, etc. So this is the line of the FSS regulation, which states that no hormones or steroids or psychotropic ingredients shall be added in any of the articles of health supplements and nutraceuticals. So the right answer is option three. So with that, we have covered... Uh, questions of today's video if you like the questions and feel it is an important video please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and classmates so that they can also be benefited and also subscribe to the channel soon i'll be covering with more such important videos till then stay safe stay healthy thank you